Hello students, welcome to Java programming course. Myself, I am Srinivas Rao, working as assistant professor from CSC department, Vignan Institute of Information Technology. Let's start our course Java programming long ways. So why we are learning this Java programming long ways? Already we learned C and C++, but this is very, very important when we are go for in a developing of in applications. The simple reason is, in today's era, the usage of internet, smartphone, became an integral part of our life. By using these devices, means smartphones, we are doing our day-to-day -day task right within our home and at our uh, hand. And earlier, we used to go shop for uh, taking any items, and uh, if you are doing any transactions, for example, if you are going for any bank, we have to maintain a queue like this. We are wasting our time. But with the help of the smartphones, we can do everything in the comfort of our home by using smartphones. We, we can do all these things with the help of the smartphones and internet, right? But how the smartphones and internet is possible to do all these things with the help of a one of the high level programming languages called Java. So what is Java? A Java is a, a programming language and a computing platform for developing applications that can run on any device. It is a one of the high level programming languages that is easy to read and understand. So it was invented by James Gosling. He is the father of this particular long ways with, this, with the support of Sun Microsystems. So this is the introductory part of Java programming long ways. And next, where we are applying this Java programming long ways? Here, I am going to explain about the, the applications where we are going to apply this Java programming long ways. So Java programming long ways, we apply in console applications, GUI, web applications, and uh, game development, and also Java is not only for uh, uh, computer based, we can use it for mobile apps and also game development. We can also use it for electronic device like, for example, ACs, washing machines, televisions. In this area also, we use our Java programming language. So that is the reason Java is very most popular in the real world. So this is the introductory part of Java programming language, and also we use it in the for making web application, GUI applications, and gaming, and also uh, washing machines, like this, all the electronic devices. And generally, we used uh, for making any reservations like this, we are using our Java programming language. This is the introductory part of Java. Next, go for the topmost programming language in the present era, means in the present world. So these are the topmost languages in the present situation. So here is the analysis of this all the languages, Python, Java, JavaScript, C++, C Sharp, PHP, Perl. So here, I have taken the four, four years analysis of data. Here, just check this one here. In 2017, check the graph here, the color, blue. When compared to remaining all the languages, Java is most popular language. At the same time, check this 2018, the color, when compared to remaining all the languages, Java is most popular language. Also the year 2019 also, in 2019 also, Java is the most popular. From 2020 onwards, there is a competition between Java and Python, but Java has a demand in some point of view, means security point of view, and developing some applications like console, web, and for example, in real world, we are generally used, right? We are going for any bank applications. Bank applications means we are doing any transactions, also we are developing using Java. But here, Java came to the picture in the, in the year 1995. From 1995 to, from this year, Java is most popular language. Before 1995, we have one of the po most popular languages, that is C programming language. Up to 1995 means before, C is most popular. After 1995, Java is the king of remaining all the languages. Why? Because it, it provides the set of all the libraries and the set of packages and classes. Those packages and libraries are not available in other programming languages. That is the reason Java is most popular language. So next we go for the entire course, what I will teach in the coming lecture. Those are, in this entire course, I am going to explain. In the entire this course is divided into multiple units. In, uh, in unit one, I am going to explain about the, the basic fundamentals which are used for our Java programming languages. Already these basic fundamentals we learn in the first year C programming language like what is the meaning of variable, data types, primitive types, 
and identifiers, operators, and also control structures. Same thing I am going to explain in the Java programming language, but but different syntactical manner. I will explain in the unit one. Whereas in unit two, I am going to explain about the what is the meaning of class and also uh, methods. These are very very important. Why? Because before going to write any Java programming, we should know about how to declare a class. In unit two, I am going to explain about these things. Whereas in unit three, the basic pillars of in unit three, the basic pillars of object-oriented programming are abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism. These concepts are the basic pillars of object-oriented programming. These concepts I will explain in unit three means here inheritance, also types of inheritance. These are very very important. Why? Because inheritance inheritance provides the reusability of the code. Means the developer needed to write the code again and again. Means it reduces the uh, number of lines of code. It reduces the what? The time to develop our applications. I will explain in this unit three. And unit three also I am going to explain about the the packages. In C we call as uh, import. We are header files, right? We are including header files. Whereas here we are importing packages. There we call as a header files. Here we call as a packages. But these are very rich set of packages. I am going to explain. This is very very important while we are developing any applications. And also in unit three we have one more important concept that is exception handling. When we are developing any applications, we made a mistakes, right? Generally we are, we make any mistakes. In order to sort out those mistakes, we go for exception handling. I will explain in unit three. And unit four, I am going to explain about the multi-threading concepts. So, in a simple one line, I will explain what is the meaning of multi-threading. Actually, in general, we are thinking that why we are, why not we are doing multiple tasks at the same time? So, if you are doing multiple tasks, means I am listening, reading, writing. These are multiple tasks. In the same time, in the real time, if you are developing any applications, I want to uh, make an application. You should be able to do multiple tasks. If you are doing multiple tasks, you should require multi-threading. Multi-threading means in a single program, we are dividing into a multiple threads. So multiple threads are executing at the parallel. We call it as multi-threading. If multi-threading is there, we can easily develop multiple tasks. So multitasking depends on multi-threading. I will explain in the unit four. And also one of the important key concepts is file handling. How to open a file, how to read a file. For example, in real time, we are doing what? For example, ATM transactions. So simply what we are doing all the operations. All these operations are performed with the help of file is open, file close, and also we are uh, performing some options, some mini statement, getting mini statement, and also we are checking our uh, balance and uh, change the password. All these things I will explain in the entire course with a one project. And also in unit five, I am going to explain about the one of the window-based applications that is applet. Actually, we know about the Either standalone applications or web-based applications. Before going to uh, going for web applications, we should know about the window-based applications. What is the meaning of window-based applications means applet. By using applet, we will create window-based applications and also event handling. So we are creating a window. But if you are pressing an icon, for example, Gmail, you know Gmail, right? Very well know about the Gmail. We are giving username, password. After that, what? We are gi giving a one. We are clicking submit option. Submit means it generate one event, one action. That action we call as event. So how to handle those events? So if you are clicking submit, it should open the the inbox of your Gmail. How it will open with the help of the particular event handling? I will explain that concept in the unit five. This is about the the course contents in this Java programming. Next we go for objectives. After learning this entire course, the student can able to understand. These concepts very very important. I'll explain data abstraction, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, and also the key concepts like multi-threading and file handling. So these are very very important. So this is the first concept the student can understand. Easy to, easy to understand these concepts, and also the student can gain the knowledge about the the relationship between uh, relationship between the class and objects, and also the student. Can understand how to apply applets and event handling. Already just now we said. So for de uh, for developing window-based and uh, web-based application, before going to web-based applications, we require applet and event handling. These two concepts I will explain in the unit five. So these are the course objectives of the this entire course. So next we will start our our programming 
first topic that is introduction to object oriented programming. So, before going to explain about the object oriented programming, we should know about the what is an object. An object means a real world existing entity, means for example, here car, car is best example for an object and also one more example, a smart TV, TV is also one of the example for an object and also a hey, bird, it is an it is an example for an object and also one more example is a flight. These are the some of the examples for an object. Also a student is an object, myself is an object, all these are real world entities. If you are representing these objects means for any objects we have characteristics means attributes and also properties. So for example here I will take car. What are the properties and attributes of a car? Car has a color, type, model and also what is the type of wheel we are used, what are the type of uh, lights we are used, all these are comes under the property characteristics. What are the actions we are performed while we are starting our car, we are start engine, stop engine, uh, increase speed, decrease speed, all these are operations. Generally we are seen, same thing I am going to apply in this Java programming language. With a simple example I am going to explain. For example, I want to make one application, student applications. In our Vignana college I want to develop a one project. That project is first yes a student, I want to make a one project. I want to know the entire details of every student. For example, a simple how to represent a student data in object point of view. Take a student, student has name, roll number, height, email, permanent address, all these are comes under attributes. What are the operations performed by a student? What are the operations? He should read, he should write, he should listen and write the exam, all these are operations. E and these properties and operations combined we call as a what? Complete object, that ob object is what? A student. In real world same thing we are used in this Java programming language. Whatever we have seen in the real world, everything we have to incorporate into our programming language. This is a simple thing for object. Same as for TV, what are the operations we performed on TV? We are changing our channels, right? What are the buttons, whatever we have shown in the each button have a property, each button have a operations. Best example for TV, also a board, the type of board and what are the operations a board perform? Eating, sleeping, flying, all these are comes under board. Everything, whatever the existing thing in the real world, all are comes under an object. Same thing we performed on object oriented programming through Java, not Java programming. This object oriented programming is common for not only Java, C sharp, Python also follows object oriented programming. So that is the reason before going to learn any advanced programming language, we should know about the object. So this is about the meaning of an object. So same as remaining examples, bird and also aeroplane. So what are the characteristics of an aeroplane, the type of a plane and the color of a plane, model, all these are comes under properties and what are the actions performed on aeroplane, increase speed, flying, all these are comes under operations. So this is about the introduction part of an object. So what is the meaning of object oriented programming? So for any object just now we have seen, so it contains data and methods, so that is the reason we go for the real world existing things into our programming. So next we go to discuss about the what is the difference between processor oriented programming and object oriented programming. This is very very important. Why? Because in first year C language you learn about C and C++. So those two are example for processor oriented programming whereas Java, C sharp, .NET are examples for object oriented programming language. Here, POOP means procedure oriented programming language whereas object oriented programming means here OOP. Here in procedure oriented programming we are dividing entire program into parts that part we called as a function. You all will learn in C programming language right? What is a function? A function is a block of code, it takes argument as a parameter, you do some calculations, give the result to the user. Same thing in Java means object oriented programming also we divide entire program into methods. So what is the difference between sir? Uh, Pro function and uh, methods are both are same. In Java point of view we called as a method whereas in C point of view we called as a function. The next important uh, point is in POP means best example C it follows top down approach. So what is the meaning of top down approach sir? Generally we are writing first header files in, where in C language, header files followed by main function the set of statements what we are going to apply whereas in object oriented programming it follows bottom up approach means 
Here, everything is based on object. Just now we, saw, we, we have seen that object is a real world entity. Based on the object, the remaining operations are performed in Java. So that is the reason we call as bottom up. Means, first we are writing same as in C language as header files, here packages. Whereas in C, main, whereas here also main. But here, only it depends on functions. But it depends on mainly the object. Why? Because whatever existing in the real world, based on the real world, we are writing the, our Java programming language. So that is the second point. The next one is, it doesn't have any access specifiers like public, private, protected. These keywords are not available in the process-oriented programming. Whereas in object-oriented programming, we have those set of specifiers. Because of those specifiers, it provides a security to our applications. Those are what? Public, private, and protected. Those keywords are available in our Java programming. So this is very, very important while we are developing any applications. The best example, Facebook. If you take an example for Facebook, generally we are seeing that in news, somebody is uh, hacked my Facebook account. Why? Because of security, lack of security. Those security is provided by with the help of access specifiers like private. If you are putting our account as a private, no one can see our data. So that is the reason these access specifiers we will learn in the unit two. I will explain in the unit two. The next one is very, very important. Here in POP, data can move from function to function easily. In C language, you already seen parameter passing, call by value. Why, how you are using? Simply we are transfer the data from one function to another functions. Whereas in Java, it is possible with the help of an object, only the object. Whatever the existing thing in the real world, based on the, those uh, existing thing, we are writing our program. The next one is, already we, we have seen that security point of view. Java is more secure, whereas in C, it provides less secure. Already we, we have seen that different examples like encapsulation, abstraction, and also access space first. Because of this rich set of libraries, we called Java is more secure when compared to remaining all the languages. This is a very, very important key point. While we are going for any interview, they ask about why C and C++ is less secure, Java is more secure. The simple answer is, it has a rich set of access specifiers, data encapsulation, and abstraction. This is very, very important. The next one is, it doesn't support overloading concept. It support overloading. So what is the meaning of simple example? I will explain about the overloading in a single one line. Meaning of overloading means, I want to perform area for all the shapes of existing thing. For example, I want to calculate area of a rectangle, area of a square, area of a circle. Everything is possible with the help of overloading. Overloading means what? Same thing with the different arguments I want to perform the application. Here, it doesn't support overloading concept. Everything we have to declare. That is the reason it takes more lines of code. Whereas Java, it takes more lines, but it gives more performance. That is the reason Java is more popular. The next one is the examples of process oriented programming and examples of object oriented programming. Here the examples already we seen. What? C is the best example for procedure oriented programming. Also Fortran and Pascal. So what are the examples of object oriented programming? C++, Java, .NET, Python. So these OOPS concepts are not only for Java. In coming years, you will learn .NET, Python also the best example for object oriented programming. So these are the main key differences. And also I want, to, I want to explain one more key difference. This is very, very important while we are going for any interview. That is the main difference between C. Take a C language from the POP. Take a Java language from the OOP. The main difference is execution time point of view, C is better. This is very, very important. Execution po time point of view, C is very most important, better. when. When compared to OOP, it is less, it takes more time to execute our program. Whereas performance point of view, Java is more popular. That is the reason, till now 2020, from the 1995 to 2020, Java is most popular. Why? What is the reason? Because of the performance. The performance means what? The set of rich set of libraries provided by Java. But those properties are not available in the process oriented to programming. This is very, very important when we are going for any interview. They ask about the what is the difference between object oriented programming and process oriented programming, the main difference is execution time point of view, this is better. Which one? Process oriented programming. But performance point of view, Java is better. So these are the difference between object oriented programming and process oriented programming. This is the first concept in our unit one. Thank you.